I'm going to try to uh, walk through some of the work that I've been involved with that has um, linkages with a lot of the themes that we've heard today. So next, next slide. Um, and I will skip this because I think that the conference has really um, brought out this concept of agroecology and linked it to agroforestry, but just a reminder that it's both a science and a set of practices, but also this broader social movement to address questions of uh, polit uh, political and uh, control over the food system. And our report that Fergus and I worked on brought out these uh, 13 principles that we think are really crucial for uh, ensuring um, uh, the movement towards a, an equitable, resilient, and sustainable food system. And uh, I see that these principles have been discussed in, in a number of different presentations uh, throughout the conference. Um, so I'm going to try to highlight some of the ways in which the work that uh, we've done in Malawi uh, bring, uh, addresses these different principles and then talk about some of the presentations today and some of the issues, some of the, some of the different um, themes that are coming out in the, in the presentations today in terms of transformations of food systems. So next slide. Uh, so I'm going to draw briefly on research that I've been involved in. I, I've been working uh, with colleagues in Malawi for over 20 years. I'm just going to highlight one research project as an example of some of the things that we've been finding are important to pay attention to if you're trying to move from a kind of field scale um, in addressing uh, ecosystem services to a broader scale of ensuring that you have uh, social, nutritional benefits, and, and you're, you're thinking about equity as well as uh, the broader food system. And so this project worked with 400 households that were selected based on high levels of food insecurity, working uh, in 20 different villages, and they were given training on agroecological principles um, and then asked, invited to select what they wanted to do experiments on over uh, several years. And so it was really uh, co-learning uh, design from the start and they uh, chose a range of different options. Next slide. And uh, some of those options included agroforestry, but it also included intercropping legumes, the application of manure uh, to, their, to their fields, um, crop diversification, and livelihood diversification. And some of these uh, are, are themes that you can see in agroecological principles, things like enhancing biodiversity, uh, ensuring soil health, um, and uh, ensuring economic diversification for, for uh, farming communities. Um, next slide. And so I, I watched some of the presentations yesterday and, uh, and I saw that this theme of biodiversity was really important in a number of different uh, examples. So diversification in Brazil, uh, were using, where they were using um, trees for multifunctional uses. Uh, diversification in uh, rubber agroforestry systems um, that really enhanced, uh, that, that was one of the main purposes for farmers being interested in, in these agroforestry systems for income opportunities, as well as in Bolivia um, using um, biodiversity. And, and this uh, biodiversity in particular is an important uh, way that you can try to ensure um, multiple benefits from, from our agroecological systems. I, I think sometimes there's a danger in agroforestry systems to try, treat uh, trees as a sil silver bullet. And that's something to be cautious about and not to see it as a technical package that you implement. And I was really excited by the presentation by um, um, Valentina uh, today where uh, this, they were testing different co-learning strategies with farmers to try to make sure that it wasn't a package deal, but it was something that the farmers were testing themselves. Um, next slide. Um, so in addition to the, the on-farm experiments that farmers were doing, a piece of work that I've done in collaboration with uh, local organizations, uh, farmer-led organization um, working in Malawi is, um, is trying to link the different agroecological practices to questions of equity and, and trying to make sure that everyone within households are benefiting from the different agroecological practice, the practices that are taking place, but also using different 
uh, teaching and learning strategies. So work on pedagogy as well as work on equity. So things like uh, recipe days, uh, seed fairs, um, theater, uh, small group dialogue. So really trying to experiment with different learning strategies and drawing from cultural um, uh, meaningful um, uh, ways of getting together and learning together and not just having um, a sort of uh, transmission of information, which is a more typical style of learning uh, used in extension. Uh, next slide. And, and we've developed a curriculum that draws on this long-term work that tries to bring together not only agroecological principles, but implications for climate change, nutrition, and social equity. And we've developed it with farmers and aimed it at farmers who have less than secondary school education. And so the, the pedagogical piece is really an important dimension of trying to ensure transforming the food system. So, so not just having a set of practices, but really having ways of learning and sharing those practices that are that are co-learning together and are trying to address questions of equity in terms of who has access to this knowledge and, and who's able to implement it. Uh, next slide. Uh, so in this uh, four-year project, we were able to show significant improvements in food security and in dietary diversity for households. Um, next slide. Importantly, um, this uh, theme of economic diversification was brought out by a number of presenters uh, in their in the um, uh, asynchronous presentations, uh, different ways that agroforestry systems can provide income diversification. In Vietnam, there, there were examples given in Indonesia in, and in um, China. Um, and uh, it was also highlighted today with the Indonesia green growth uh, presentation. Um, and in the bamboo example, um, the very first presentation that we heard. Um, next slide. Um, but our, our work went, uh, I guess I would say, further by looking at the question of how, um, uh, how this food security um, uh, and dietary diversity improved. So we, we looked at income diversification, but we also looked at food security and nutrition benefits. And then we asked how that how that happened. And one thing that we found really interesting with this study is that at the beginning of the uh, project, we asked questions about whether people discussed farming with their spouse. And only 10% of households reported discussing farming with their spouse. That was a very interesting number because um, women and men both do the agricultural work in farms in, in Malawi. At the end of the work, after we'd done a lot of discussions and different uh, learning activities around gender, we found an increase in the number of households who discussed farming with their spouse. It was those households who were more likely, that was one of the drivers that we found in our analysis, that they, they were more likely to be food secure and have diverse diets. So addressing some of the equity and knowledge flows within households was an important feature in this context for addressing food security and dietary diversity. Uh, next slide. And we've done uh, larger scale work, um, working with 6,000 farmers um, in Northern and Central Malawi. And I won't go into all the details of this uh, research project that uh, finished two years ago, um, but we found a significant link between the adding on of multiple practices and the likelihood of becoming food secure and having higher income. And we also found linkages between farmers who were participating in these farmer to farmer learning activities that I described briefly and the likelihood of them adopting agroforestry along with a host of other practices. So there is something about this opportunity this, of, of this horizontal learning uh, strategy for farmers to, to share and learn from one another. Um, next slide. And this, this was mentioned and, and is being tested in the example we heard this morning from, uh, or today, from Peru, uh, really testing different learning strategies. And I think that's really crucial if you're going to think about transforming the food, uh, the food system. Um, Valentina talked about uh, a typical extension approach is really transmitting information, but when we, we, when we look at adult education uh, literature, we know that people learn in all kinds of different ways, and, and having a more horizontal system that allows for different learning strategies and more sharing, and not just transmission, but exchange, it really helps to build um, knowledge. Um, part of this study, we looked at whether 
uh, people were benefiting in terms of their social networks. And we found that people were uh, increasing their social capital as a result of participating in these agroecological exchanges, but there was a bi-directional approach. So they were more likely to increase their social capital. And in turn, they were more likely, uh, because this is a longitudinal study, we were able to look at the likelihood that they then adopted additional um, agroecological practices as they began to exchange with more people and, and share more information. Um, next slide. So this idea of co-creation of knowledge is, is really important and, and it has to do not only with equity within households, but also the low um, political um, can agency that many smallholder farmers have in relation to broader uh, systems of power. And, and this was touched on in, in a number of different ways in the presentation, but in presentations we heard today, um, and in some of the presentations, the asynchronous presentations, there, there can be limited sharing of knowledge uh, between older people and younger people in, in a case um, given in Indonesia. Um, and there can be creative ways to ensure that we hear um, marginalized voices, whether they be indigenous people or whether they're small scale farmers who often have very little uh, political say in, in what kind of information is shared and, and have very little opportunity to share their own knowledge. Um, next slide. So in Malawi, there are a number of uh, barriers uh, at the national scale and from the international community that make the use of agroecological practices often very difficult to, to extend beyond uh, project level um, efforts. And um, this wasn't touched on by many of the presentations today. And I think, uh, I think the kind of broader um, uh, institutional systems that may prevent transformational change really need to be faced um, if we're going to see the kind of transformation that we're looking for and, and um, that have been, has been talked about. Um, so um, uh, whether it's subsidy programs, whether it's the kind of trade agreements that are being implemented, uh, seed policies, it can be very difficult to to have an alternative to the dominant um, intensified approach that's being taken by many countries uh, around the world. But there are windows of opportunity. And, and I have a picture here of the fall armyworm. I, uh, in the last few years, we've been in collaboration working with the Minister of Agriculture, who's interested in uh, trying biological methods of controlling fall armyworms, such as the use of um, botanical uh, pesticides using uh, less toxic approaches, so things like tithonia um, and, and tuprosia. And uh, so this offers a window for trying to build these connections. And a, a few of you uh, talked about that. The example uh, that comes to mind is, is um, Valentina's work on this obscure forestry law that really provided an opportunity to uh, support smallholders in using agroforestry systems and then trying to expand out and work with uh, multi-stakeholders in, in that um, opportunity. So I think looking for windows of opportunity and seizing them and finding um, uh, allies to, to try to build uh, to, to try to build more political power around these questions is a real um, challenge that, that uh, you're uh, offered uh, with this um, approach. And I think the donut model uh, has that in the interior of the donut, um, but measuring it and trying to amplify it, I think is a, is, is a real challenge. Um, next slide. So some of the presentations, the asynchronous presentations brought out these um, questions around land and natural resource governance, which really get at politics, really get at, around political voice and agency. And uh, so, for example, the lack of political policies or public policies in Bolivia to support um, small scale coca agroforestry alongside uh, limited technical support or credit for small scale farmers. And uh, the presentation by um, Pino in um, Indonesia really spoke about the dominant role that concession policies for oil palm changed the landscapes and really led to a sort of back treading of really rich agroforestry systems that had been in place there. So, so really facing those legislative, political, institutional structures that can prevent uh, the um, um, transformation of food systems and finding allies and opportunities to, 
to build uh, linkages and, and try to strengthen agroforestry pro approaches, I think is, is crucial for transforming food systems. Next slide. So just in conclusion, from our own work in Malawi, we found that attention to participatory learning methods is really important and really having direct attention paid to questions of equity and power at multiple scales, be it the household scale, community scale, and between farmers and government and farmers and scientists is really important. And having context specific methods, so not seeing uh, agroecology as, as a set of practices that are predetermined, but really doing experiments that fit the local social and the e environmental context and having a number of different ways of assessing change over time. So the, the donut model that Todd uh, presented earlier really hearkens to the importance of paying attention to many different metrics, health, um, uh, well-being, equity, as well as ecosystem services in multiple ways. And so having this holistic approach that really takes into account the multiple ways that changing our food system can impact different uh, um, aspects of that system. Uh, so with that, I um, offer it up to questions if there's time. Well, uh, thank you very much, Rachel. I think you've said it all. Um, uh, uh, and and you've, uh, we've only got two minutes left. So I'm not going to attempt, but I, I think there's an awful lot in, in what you said. And I really love that last slide that, that I think gives um, a, a very clear message in terms of the ways that we need to work if um, our uh, work is going to be transformational um, uh, by addressing those sort of three key aspects, all of which have uh, featured quite a lot throughout the, the conference, not only in the sessions in stream three, but also uh, in many of the other streams. So we are, you know, moving in the right direction, even if we've uh, still got quite a long way to go uh, in really pulling things together. And I think part of that is, is trying to work across projects. You know, we tend to live in a projectized world. Um, and actually, we need to be far more integrated in, in, in what we do. Uh, and so uh, trying to make sure that we operate in the space between each of the individual initiatives we do in order to deliver on, on uh, those ambitions, I think, is going to be really important going forwards. I'd like to thank uh, Rachel for, for, for stepping in and, and doing a wonderful job. It was fantastic that you were so inclusive, Rachel, of all the uh, asynchronous presentations, um, as well as the, uh, uh, what's been presented live. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Fabio, um, um, Federica, and the huge team of people behind you, uh, who we never get to see, um, <laughs> who make all, all of this possible. Um, and to all of the, the, the presenters today, you've really kept us gripped, despite one or two uh, technical hitches here and there. Um, you all did a superb job, um, and we kept a, a massive audience, a huge number of questions um, um, uh, fizzing over. And please, you can continue to answer questions that are relevant to you uh, in the Q&A. Uh, and remember, the murals are live. Uh, Vincent, do you have anything to say before we close? Uh, you, you have to say it in a matter of seconds. It was brilliant and it's a lot of food for thought and for development of further work on, on the matter. Thank you to everybody. Okay, so with that, uh, I close this session. Um, and uh, of course, there's another session that starts in, in quarter of an hour. Um, uh, and that's on Fabio. It's stream four. We have um, uh, bioenergy and um, I don't remember the other topic. I'm sorry. Resilience. <laughs> Resilience, Resilience, right. Yeah, yeah. there are two, yeah. two sessions, in fact. Two sessions yeah. in one. Yeah. In one. You one after the other. For the price of one. Exactly. Okay. Well, I hope that that turns out to be as exciting as this one was. And with that, I'll, I'll let you all get off and have a, a, a break. Bye bye to everybody. Thanks. And thank Thanks you. Thanks to everyone. Thank bye bye. You all. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye.